Well, good morning, Calvary family. It was so good. Those of us that were here were able to look in the chat. There's so many of you chiming in this morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. What a beautiful Sunday it is. And, and I think it was Christine that mentioned the bird's nest in the background of the images in the announcement slides and just how, how appropriate that was for today. So welcome as you get settled in at home, whatever that looks like in your home. Moms in our family, both biological, stepmoms, spiritual moms, we want to say happy Mother's Day to you as our community this morning. We're going to pop into some announcements, but please keep chiming into that chat so that we know you're with us. It makes us feel like we're coming together as a community physically, even when we're just, uh, I say just doing it spiritually. I'm going to take the just out of that. When we come together as a community spiritually, that is actually uh, more, more powerful and more prevalent than the, the physical space that we're in. So bless you as you do that and chime into our chat this morning and welcome you. The uh, links are there, all the usuals. Those of you who are a part of our family every Sunday know where they, where they are. I'll highlight two right now after the service. There's coffee time, the links are below, and prayer blessing, the links are below in your feed this morning. So make sure those are two ways to engage intentionally in some community this morning. Uh, there was a great picture this week, those of you who follow us on social media, of coffee time. It was a screen of, of Zoom shots and the joy. I saw Sheila was one of the faces that was in that and looked like a great connect. So encourage you again, make some time to connect in community, whatever that looks like. But coffee time is definitely there as a time to say hi. And the prayer links are there. We have people who are n not just waiting, but intentionally there to give space and time to, to bless our community and love to do that. So if you feel even the slightest nudge to do that this morning, would encourage you. It is always a joy to go and receive prayer from our people. So um, I am also super excited about the, the Lighthouse link this morning. Olivia has put that together and uh, a fun song to, to lead into that one this morning. So make sure kids, families, and Calvary family in general, click on that after the service and have some fun with that this morning. Um, Andrew and Amanda are starting up another small group. We've highlighted a number of ways to connect over the last month and encouraged you to engage in community. There's another opportunity coming up May the 20th on Thursdays, May and June. Andrew and Amanda are hosting that one on, on Zoom. And just get in touch with them if that's something that you're interested in. And I think what they're going to do is use Sunday mornings as kind of the, the topic and, and question content for their group. So a fun way to connect with each other, a fun way to continue to dig deeper. And I know there was lots of great testimonies out of that the last time they did that. So I would encourage you to contact Andrew and Amanda. And that is on our website under events. There's more details there. You'll find an image there. And the other um, piece of content that I wanted to highlight this morning was last week we had spoken about what's happening in India around the COVID crisis that's there and wanted to highlight. We still have links available and under our, uh, in our website as well. You can find some ways to donate and we highlight a couple of ways to do that. So I wanted just to continue to encourage you to think about how you can be praying for that part of our world and using your resources to bless what, what's happening there to, um, to give them some of the resources that they so desperately need. I think that's all of the like nitty gritty stuff of the morning. I always feel like I got to make sure I don't drop any balls and I have this little list in front of me and want to make sure I honor everything that's happened. But I want to say what a great Sunday this is as we've been talking about community, in encouraging all of you to engage in the community that is both here at Calvary and out outside of this space and place places where you find God in people and able to connect and find deep friendship and deep relationship that point you back to God. 
we're going to continue to talk about that this morning and have a beautiful service planned out for you that we just want to lay before God right now and, and ask God to, to fill and bless and, and stir us to see what beautiful relationships he has placed in our lives. And so obviously on Mother's Day, we want to highlight family and, and, and mothers and the blessing that God intended for that relationship. And so as I, I started and said, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our house, I both recognize that that can be a beautiful celebration and can stir up lots of emotion in, in many of us through the relationships that have maybe not worked out the way we had thought. And, and those of you who know me know I'm a mom and I will stand here on behalf of mothers and go, we are not perfect. <laughs> So yes, Mark is at home going, amen, sister. <laughs> We're not perfect. And uh, as much as I, I know my mom's watching, would say happy Mother's Day, we know we're not perfect, and we know that those relationships both speak into identity and, uh, and our reason to celebrate and, and sometimes are hard because we know that in relationship, the, we'll have people speak to this later, community is hard. And community means people, and people means imperfection. And so can I bless us as we enter into this service to take a step back from this being a day where, where we are either A, as moms, waiting and wanting for the honoring we so deserve, <laughs> or a, as, a, as a person who has been hurt through broken relationships, people that we've lost in our lives that have been those figures for us, relationships that haven't worked out the way that we had wanted. Can we take a step back from those? And as we take a step back from those, place ourselves at God's feet for a moment. And I want to encourage us to come to God for a moment. So Father God, we take a step back from relationships and take a step into our relationship with you. And God, would you place your, your hand upon our hearts right now? God, we know that you are both father and mother. We so often refer to you as Father God, someone who we get our identity from as a provider and a faithful, steadfast protector and almighty God in our life and you are our creator. You are our nurturer. You are the one that longs for us the most to become everything that you created us to be. And that is the heart that you've put in our earthly relationships of mothers. So God, right now, would you stir up Would you stir up gratitude? And would you stir up and highlight a blessing out of our relationship with our own mother in our life? God, would you bring to the forefront of our minds an image of us with our biological mums, whether it actually happened or whether it is your heart for that relationship. A relationship that was instrumental in creating us and a relationship whose heart really is to have us become all that we were meant to be. And God, we want to take a moment to take our eyes off of ourselves and put our eyes on you and say, God, thank you for the heart of our mom, for the heart of someone wanting to bless us to be all we were created to be. And God, we want to bless also, the people who have filled that role in our life in other ways, whether we have had 
a beautiful, healthy relationship with our own mom, or whether that's been something that's been hard for us and we really needed someone to come and, and step in. We know that besides our, our biological, physical moms, there have been many, many, many other people in our lives that have stepped in with the heart of a mom who have spoken into us, nurtured us, comforted us, walked with us, helped us heal and launched us into more of who you have created us to be. So God, would you stir up a name for us that we can bless and give thanks to you for the mothers that you have placed in our lives. And God, we lay all of these relationships at your feet, knowing that your heart is to also be a mother to us, to comfort us, nurture us in our times of, of hurt and celebrate with us as we step into more of who we are created to be. So God, we say to you this morning, thank you. Thank you for the mothers that you've placed in our life, all shapes, sizes, ages, stages. And God, we celebrate you and the way you nurture us. We, we worship you this morning. We come to you this morning with thanksgiving and praise. Would you draw us into community with you and with those around us? And we worship you. Amen. I want to take us uh, for a moment just to keep going with what I think God is doing. Uh, and so this is adding in. <laughs> um, I think God is wanting to minister right now to uh, people who are feeling lost this morning. Um, and Kelly touched on it. I just want to pray into it a little bit more. But if you in any way are, are uh, experiencing grief today, feeling a sense of uh, maybe I missed out on receiving or I missed out on giving that kind of love. Uh, I just want to pray because Kelly hit on it so well that God is actually ministering to our hearts this morning and wanting to take away our grief and meet us to be uh, a loving parent, a father and a mother to us, a comforter, all of those things. So, Jesus, we just ask you to carry on with what you're doing. For those of us who are grieving today, whether grieving because somebody's not here today, we just ask you to draw close to us and meet us and, and allow us to receive all of the gifts that are huh, the people we're grieving were able to give us. And for those of us who may be grieving what we didn't get, <laughs> uh, God, we, we just ask you to continue to give us the hope. It's Romans 5.5. 5. Uh, hope does not disappoint because God has shed his love abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And we pray, God, that you would just pour your love into every spot of our hearts that just needs ministering this morning. And for those of us who are grieving uh, our missed chances uh, that when we weren't an awesome, perfect parent, uh, an awesome, perfect mom or grandma, God, thank you so much that you allow us to recognize areas that can be improved so that you can pour your love in us and pour your love through us. God, we ask that you would stir up hope that every loss, every grief, and every failure, uh, you are awaiting with hope to pour out your love to meet us and use us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't expect that this morning. Oh, man. <laughs> ah. Uh, I just want to set up a scripture for you this morning. Uh, it's going to be just this, be there's beautiful sharing from a number of our congregation this morning and such rich nuggets of teaching out of this scripture that we just wanted to set it up and then let our congregation speak to it. So if you would, get open your Bibles, uh, whether you use a phone or a paper Bible, grab your Bible this morning. 
grab it, open it up to Acts 2.42. Uh, and we'll just wait a minute before we pop that up, Andrew. I want, I want to set that up for you a second. Um, so imagine Luke writing this section of Scripture about the beginning of the early church. And before we get there, just know, uh, early on, in the first 50 years after uh, Jesus crucified, rose, risen, ascended into heaven, the early church poured out the Holy Spirit and beginning to move as the church. In those first 50 years, there was a Jewish uh, Roman historian, uh, Josephus, who was not a Christian, but when he was writing to the Romans about the, the Jewish uh, problem, really, is what he was describing, and the Jewish history, he mentions Christians. It's one of the earliest uh, non-Christian mentions of Christianity, and what he described was a community who passionately believed that Jesus was the Savior, Redeemer, Messiah, and who gave their entire lives to let the world know and show the world what Jesus is like. That's Josephus. And then shift another generation later, you get a Greek philosopher, Aristides, uh, who we, we don't speak Koine Greek anymore, so we don't know how we pronounced it, so you'll assume that my way is the correct way, Aristides. <laughs> uh, Aristides uh, talked about, he became a Christian, a Greek philosopher became a Christian and he describes what he saw in Christians that revealed Jesus. So you get Josephus looking from the outside seeing Christians revealing Jesus and now you get the next generation Aristides a Greek philosopher looking at Christians and this is what he says. After he becomes a Christian he says people around Christians are saying see how they love one another. Isn't that beautiful? These aren't, these aren't uh, paid to be good people saying that. These are the people around. And now, with that in mind, when you say, well, what was it about the early church? What was it about the people that met Jesus and responded to Jesus, which we can include ourselves in, that made them, others around them say, Oh, look at the love that they are showing one another. Look at who they are and how they love God. What is it about them that I want that? And at the end of Acts 2, you'll see that over and over, more and more are being added to the community because of this. So, as we look at the scriptures, as you listen to, this, um, to the people sharing this morning, let this be a tick box for you. God, how am I allowing your love to be shed abroad in my heart and how am I loving one another see how they love one another love looks like something and fortunately Acts kind of sums up what you're going to see in the rest of the book of Acts the rest of the New Testament and in the sharing this morning so Andrew if we could pop that up all the believers devoted themselves See, they recognized from this encounter with God that it was important to dive in wholeheartedly to the apostles' teaching. So there was teaching and to fellowship, getting together, and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them all. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they have next they sold their property and possessions and they shared the money with those in need they worshiped together in the temple they met in homes for the lord's supper they shared their meals with great joy and generosity and all the while praising god and enjoying the good will of all people and each day the lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved Let's just, I'm just going to keep on this slide and then we're going to pop back to the last one. What does, what does this love encounter with God and with each other look like? Because they realized really early on that they had to do it together. 
they, they, like I said a few weeks ago, the disciples were just modeling with the new community what Jesus modeled for them. He called his disciples to follow him. He said, if you do life with me, you will experience my love and my power and you will start to experience the deep love of God and see God working through you. So they worshiped together. Sometimes you don't feel like worship and it's in these settings where somebody else is leading you into the presence of God that helps you worship. They met in each other's homes. They knew that you can't just watch on a screen. And stay in your home and be ignited and be encouraged and be held when you're struggling and be called to more and be inspired. You need to get together. And so they met in their homes. They shared the Lord's Supper. They shared meals. And they, were, they said, how can I be generous? God is being so generous to me. I want to be that to other people. And they praised God and they rejoiced in all the good that they were seeing. And because of that, God kept saying, adding people who said, I want what they've got. Go back to the last slide there, and, we'll just, and then we'll dive back into worship for a second. They devoted themselves to teaching, to fellowship, to sharing in meals, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them, and signs and wonders happened. Last point. Teaching, signs and wonders, and miracles were happening, and those revealed the power and love and presence of God, and in that happening, they didn't, all the people joining together didn't go, we want more signs and wonders and teaching. What they started to do is, we want to know that love and share that love. They met together, they worshiped, they prayed, they shared joyously, they said, how can we be more like this love that we're experiencing and how can we help each other do it? Signs and wonders do need to happen. Miracles do need to happen, but it's in that context of love. Paul the Apostle, who was one of those other outside the church critics of Christianity, when he experienced the love of Jesus and the church revealing the love of Jesus, he wrote that verse. Hope does not disappoint because God has poured his love upon us through the Holy Spirit. And then he wrote that amazing passage in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Let me describe what I've experienced from Jesus and from being together. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude or self-seeking. Love keeps no records of wrong. Love rejoices in the truth. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Love never ends. Outside looking in says, this is a love that I want to experience. So as we head into a moment of worship, let's pray together and allow God to start check, uh, spurring you on to God. Where is it that I have held myself back from being together to receive your love, but also so that others can be inspired to your love as well? Where have I held back from generosity? Where have I held back from worship? Where have I held back from seeking more of God's love and moving in my life, signs and wonders, teaching? Where have I held back my resources? Not out of guilt, but because God has so much more. Lord Jesus, would you come today? And would you minister to us? Would you write these verses on our hearts? inspire us to meet together and help us to become more of a church that loves. Help me to become a person who loves better so that I can know your love, pour it out, and so that others can see even dimly a reflection of how amazing your love, your goodness, and your grace are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for the rich worship this morning. I trust that God is meeting you in your, in your living rooms as he's meeting us here. I don't know how many of you have um, been watching The Chosen. I know that uh, many of us here in this community have, have really enjoyed um, that journey. And, and if you've been tracking, they're on um, 
season two, and I've just been watching them as they're unfolding. And, and I do think there will probably be another study if Terry has anything to do about that. Some people are asking about that. Um, but the latest chosen uh, episode is this beautiful collection of the disciples and followers of Jesus sitting around a campfire, asking questions, telling stories, testifying. And it's this beautiful picture of community. And as, um, as, a, as a staff team and, pl- and worship planning team, we were, we were talking about well, freedom looks like not doing it alone. Freedom looks like community and, and using acts just, uh, just like that beautiful um, scripture that Drew unpacked. That's what freedom gets to look like, that we don't have to do it alone. And so I got this picture of like, oh, wouldn't it be great as a church family, we could just sit around a campfire and just share testimony and share our experience is because it doesn't it didn't make sense on it on a, the theme of community for it to be one voice it felt like it needed to be collective and so then I got this picture of like yeah let's have like the panel up here and like we can have different like conversations together and I'm like oh wait if we have a panel that's like half of the people we're allowed to have in the building and that just wouldn't work and I'm like oh we are in a season where God is using video and media and so this morning for our, our, our teaching, like Drew said, for our message, we want to actually hear from the collective. So, so I invited a variety of voices to reflect on that Acts 2 scripture. I gave them the scripture and just said, Spend, take some time and, and think about some examples in your life where you experience community, both in the beautiful ones and in the challenging ones and in the ways that it's, it's spurring you to keep growing. So this morning, I want you to settle in. Picture yourself sitting around a campfire and listen to the stories. And I, and I say settle in because a lot of times when we um, have a sharing video, it's usually three or four minutes. No, this one will be just, so, just even to tell your mind, like you get to kind of settle into like an episode here this morning. It's going to be about 20 minutes long. So this is, this is where we're going to live this morning. So you're not like, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's still going. It's still going. Yeah, like settle in. It's, it's going to be a beautiful, a beautiful journey. And, and I also just want to encourage you, as you hear people sharing, some folks get vulnerable and share some real raw stuff. And, and if that triggers some, some stirring in your heart, know that the same way that these people brought those things to God and to community, you get to as well. Or, or if you're watching that and you go, what I have not experienced community in that way, and you sense a spirit of offense rise up in you, you get to bring that to God as well. So, so as people unpack, as people share thoughts and experiences, may it stir up, like Drew said, hope. May it stir up a picture of what community looks like when we fix our eyes on him. So settle in, let's warm ourselves by the fire, and let's hear the goodness of God through community. A community is made up of different parts, different pieces, different gifts, each of us with different stories to bring to the collective. I wouldn't be where I am today in my faith journey without my church community. In the words of Mercy Me's new song, Brand New, don't worry, I'm not going to sing, I'm brand new. Now I'm seeing what's been there all along. What took me so long? Once I was lost, but now I'm only fashionably late. When I was young, I had some minimal exposure to church, but I was lacking a community to draw me in, primarily because my family weren't churchgoers. I was fortunate to grow up in a family that believed in God and went to church every Sunday. We went to Sunday school, youth groups, camps, taught Sunday school. 
It would have been at camp where I committed my life to Jesus. You know, I grew up in an established church. My dad was a minister. Um, we had a lot of very active youth group with a discipleship class. We went on mission tours. The church for me meant, meant quite a bit, but I, it made me feel like I was almost in two spaces. I really think that, that one of the most vivid times of feeling that the church was very alive for me, like in this passage in Acts, Acts 2, where everyone shares things together, uh, was uh, was around a crew of friends that developed around university at Acadia. I, I gotta I gotta admit, some days it's very hard. It's very hard to be the Christian when you know there's just so much negative going on. And my journey is, you know, it, I'm still a work in progress. That's what I will always say. It's those moments when we feel alive, when we experience the fullness of God, when our hearts and eyes are open to the beauty and love of Jesus, something sparks and stirs in us because of the Holy Spirit moving and because he's moving in those around us too. And a memory comes to mind in regards to our Christmas, our women's Christmas potluck. We bring our favorite dishes, we compare notes and recipes, we have a really nice service, um, we sing Christmas carols, and um, we just have a great time. And looking back at it, it's um, the, in the incentive is great food, having great food. But the joy of the whole thing is um, the presence of God and the Holy Spirit coming upon us as we're gathering as, as friends and neighbors and just having a great time. And the more people that have that feel good feeling um, are just gonna jump on board and you know wanna go along for the ride. And I think that's, um, what the first ch first church was about is um, people just experiencing something totally different and everyone else wanting to get on board. I went to the Overflow Conference in Waterloo. It's a conference where all the Pentecostal churches get together and we play game sports. And then we go and have worship services and mosh pits during the services. And it's just one big youth party. Uh, just the support for my youth group was amazing. I decided that it was the time to change my life. I actually told, wanted to turn my life around because I wasn't living for Christ at that moment in time. So I stood up and said, I want to have Christ in my in my corner. One that really comes to mind just fresh is probably because I revisited it for a Calvary video is the baptism uh, with Gavin and Josie at our church. What was really awesome was just uh, the celebratory tone when you, I think some people have probably seen that video, but everyone's singing. Um, and it's just such a, a moving celebration and I've, I've watched people's faces in this video um, like my father-in-law's face my mother-in-law's face my mom's face other people who, who are around and and how moving it is to see uh, this this act of faith declaration in the church and having us all sort of party them in it was a pretty cool experience but life's journey can be hard too it can knock us down can feel like we're all alone but it's in those moments when someone walks with us in that pain in those questions in that quiet season that we often find the hope and comfort not just of those around us but of our good good God
Going through a tragic loss of losing my husband, children's father, and their teens brought us closer. I found our church family, friends, neighbors, carried us through our difficult times and supported us. That in itself was would have been would have strengthened my faith in God. When I was in the hospital, I felt the presence of the church community because when I was able to have visitors, my friends and family got to come, like like Drew Matt, Drew and Steve Morris and it came to see me and I didn't know I feel like I was fighting an uphill battle all by myself. It helped me realize how God is actually working in my life. Well, when when my husband passed away, and um, I was comforted by my my church, I was comforted by knowing God was walking on this journey with me, and knowing that my journey, other people have followed and you know just guiding me on on what to expect on on what's going on and just being there for me like not um offering suggestions on what i should do but just letting me know how they've handled it when it happened so about five years ago uh, my youngest daughter um, developed um, severe anxiety and depression. She was in grade five. So that was, uh, it was a very scary time for us. We didn't know what was going on. She um, was complaining about stomach aches. We had doctor's appointments and x-rays and blood work and nothing was coming back. It was um, noted that it wasn't anything physical. She had um, some mental health issues going on. Um, so the nurse practitioner referred us to a psychiatrist with a warning that there are very few psych pediatric psychiatrists in the region and she would be on a long wait list. Don't expect to get an appointment for many months. Um, a few days later I walked into my daughter's room and saw a knife sitting in there. So I calmly asked her what that was for, and she looked up at me and just shook her head. I walked out of the room and um, I said uh, the prayer that um, it's very effective and it's not quite, it's not very long and it's not quite very eloquent. Uh, it was, God, I need help. I don't know what to do. So, as often happens when you pray that prayer, oh, if that's too many words for you, just help, that also works, as I've found it in other situations. Um, we got a call from the uh, psychiatrist's office the next day. She had an appointment within three weeks of the original referral, um, which was absolutely amazing. But the psychiatrist got her on some medication and um, she started to, to turn around. She had a social worker coming from the school to help her um, with her homework so she didn't fall behind. Students in her class um, on her birthday made her cards and little gifts and one of the girls in her class brought it over, um, which really <laughs> warmed this mama's heart. <laughs> uh, so, on so the the day she came home from school and didn't go back was september 18th the second day after the um christmas holidays she was up she came out dressed and said mom i'm going to school today she was not perfect but she was well enough to go back to school and none of this would have been possible without all of the supports of the community around me without um, my Calvary family praying for us. And then I was asked uh, to speak about that at, um, share about that at one of the services later on. So after I shared, um, several people came up to me and said, my kids are struggling too. Can, what did you do? 
can you talk can I talk to you can you pray for me um that was just so overwhelming just to know I wasn't our family wasn't in this alone it was um out there and it was it was hard um so in that time I did pray for other people and um made some really good connections um through that and uh I am I am so grateful to all of you who who prayed for our family um unfortunately we are now going through this again um but I know we're going to get through it um and uh, I just would continue to ask for your prayers for our family as I continue to pray for all of you. To be a disciple of Jesus means we are students. We are learning. And as we grow in our faith, we are pruned, stretched, encouraged, and strengthened. And we need the church in all its forms to be that to one another. After I married Dale, who was a church goer, we decided to attend a church closer to home and came to Calvary. By that time in my life, I was so hungry for more and attending Sunday services just wasn't enough. I began attending Bible studies and felt safe asking my many questions within the community of those small groups. Those studies helped me gain head knowledge, but it was really Thursday morning prayer group that fundamentally altered my faith journey. When asked to join by Mary Lynn McPherson and Catherine Stickney, I first said no a couple times, but they persisted and I finally agreed to attend. The support of them Drew and Kathy Linsman was and continues to be life-giving. As Romans 5.15 says, to celebrate with each other and to weep with. You might look at my work on the settlement committee as an act of service, which it is, but it's so much more. I have learned so much from the community of Christians on the committee and been exposed to a whole new community and culture, starting with the L. Othman family. My church has helped me to push myself to do more for others. Going on the Mexico mission trip with others from the church showed us, or showed me, that I was very fortunate and needed to give to others. They had little, but gave much to us. Working alongside others in different committees, groups, I found that sharing with them in groups was as much fun as fulfilling, and fulfilling as the actual outcome itself. We had many laughs, fellowship making those apple dumplings. I still struggle with quoting scriptures, but feel I can show others how I love and care for them by doing the little things. Example, meals for shut-ins, helping to support, support the youth in our church to follow their dreams, visiting or calling on the seniors in our church and neighborhood. One of the things I have committed to is supporting others who have lost a loved one or help them to work through their grief process. Is I actually met, met some believers in the, the hospital and we have many church services in the courtyard at, on the floor. So we sang and then I got up and preached during one of them and we just took time finding songs to sing and praise the Lord. If I was having an anxious uh, thought that day, I'd go and uh, I'd go and say, okay, we're having a church service in the courtyard in 10 minutes. Like friends and church family able to come together for one purpose. The last community I'm part of that I will mention is small, only two people. And that's with my prayer partner, Kathy Linsman. Kathy and I have been meeting every week for a couple of years now. We share our faith journey, what we're wrestling with, we praise God, study scripture, and pray. Oh, and there might be some time spent on catching up on each other's lives. As it says in Acts 2:42, our hearts are mutually linked to one another. 
coming together regularly for prayer. Because I need to move forward. I need to expand my horizons. And my community and my church are helping me do that. And together, we are the kingdom, sons and daughters of the king. And together, we get to keep building up that kingdom, the church, community, family, as God intended us to be. Um. And I think I went through a time of kind of like injury, like spiritual injury or disillusionment with like the structures of church, not with like the global church or with God's, God's movement in it. And then I, I joined a, a house church in Elmira while in this period of disillusionment. And this is a theme I think God really wants me to share that that church became, which was only, you know, four or five families became a place of recuperation. Um, it was light again. We could we could all have moments of participation and leadership and sharing. I had to learn how to lead a bit of worship at that church, and I don't think that's my strongest gift. But we needed someone to who could play guitar to lead some worship songs, and so it stretched me. But there was a there was just a sense of, of nurturing, and it prepared me again. I think to enter into our our more established uh, structure at at Calvary, which is still. I think we've wrestled it into a into a culture of being able to move fast and light uh, with ministries like Downtown Kitchener and the youth and all the shifting that we've done with uh, the tech team and now the emergence of more and more small groups. It's got me, I think, excited for the ways in which God is moving. And I really think, you know, the church should be light on its feet. And I think the spirit wants the church to be light on its feet and, uh, and to be flexible and open. And that's, you know, that gives me a lot of hope. Um, particularly when I see kids being able to to speak, when I see youth being able to, to be celebrated and do things that are uh, that are big, like uh, travel the world, sharing sharing the gospel. Um, I'm thinking of Braden in northern northern Alberta right now, out there stretching his wings and uh, and uh, you know he's out of, out of the nest, uh, forging forging onward so it's very encouraging to see that type of uh to, to the church just be be light and be able to rally around people and uh and allow people to make you know a big impact with a lot of support and encouragement and that's uh, it fills me with a lot of hope so what do all these flavors of community mean to me it's a safe place where people know you well enough to call out the gold in you affirm god's words over you encourage you to more and hold you accountable. It's a place to learn from others, watching role models in action. It's a place to feel God's love and feel a deeper connection with others. It's a place for humility, to put the needs of the others at the forefront. Is it always wonderful? No, we are human after all. There will be discord. People will let you down. You may fall into the trap of comparing yourself to others and finding yourself lacking. But that's why we have God. A community of believers is not a substitute for a relationship with God. We need to focus on God first and then share out of that in our community. Romans 12.5 says, We are all vitally joined to one another, with each contributing to the others. I'm finding that being involved in a church family gives me strength, strength in numbers. Just knowing that you're not alone, you're not walking this journey alone. There's people walking with you and helping you out along the way. So that's what community is. Well, I, I, I hope that that was more than just stories. If that was and that stirred you, amen. That's, that's rich and, and good and will produce goodness in you, just hearing the testimonies of others. And thank you to, to the crew of you who were willing to put a piece of your journey on, on camera 
and share with us. Um, but, but I want us, just as we head into some closing worship, um, I want us to take a moment to just reflect for a moment. And I wonder if Dave could even help us and make a, a prayerful moment. I want you to think about your own journey, your own story. And what are, what are the things in your life that have sparked that? What are the pieces of, of wood and the different elements and the different people that have come together, the different experiences, the different common collective? How has community sparked in you? How has Holy Spirit moved in you? And maybe that's a... a an opportunity this week in your quiet time to ask that same question I asked of the sharers. What have been some of those markers in your journey with God where people, where community has been a spark? Celebrate those testimonies. Celebrate those mountaintop moments where you're breaking bread together, you're baptizing, you're experiencing the fullness of God. And celebrate those. Thank God for those. Reach out to those people and go, thank you. Thank you for being in my fire with me. Thank you for sparking me. And also maybe even in this moment, think about some of the, the ways and spaces where even in the midst of being knocked down or feeling alone or experiencing real raw life stuff, community came around you. Maybe not perfectly, and maybe even times that community has failed. And inviting God to remind you how he continued to be the flame. He continued to be good. He continues to be faithful and sparking and lighting that fire in you. And maybe you just need to think about the different ways that you need to step in and let community breathe life on you, to, to prune you, to go, hey, hey, come over here. Just like Drew was saying, what are the spaces that maybe you've stepped back and what are the ways that you need to step in? What are the different places within this community that are tangible like a group but maybe it's a relationship maybe it's maybe it's just opening your heart and trusting that God does not want us to do this alone and how can we breathe and spur one another on how can we continue to build up as a kingdom piece by piece so God we just continue to pray for this particular community and we, we thank you for all the ways that this family has done life together, has done struggles, has done celebrations. And God, continue to teach us and continue to teach us individually. Teach me how to love. God, may you spark, may you ignite, may you heal May you build, may you breathe on each of us and may you bring us alongside other people and may other people come alongside us. So God, set a fire. Set a fire. Start with us in our own stories and our own journeys. And as we come alongside others, may it be a fiery inferno of your spirit working in and through us. May we be the church. May we be the church. Amen. <laughs>